Meet Papa, my dad, my Superman. There's two sure things about Papa. He loves to eat and he hates to wear shirts. The bibs I make keep him tidy and warm and I'll show you just how I do it. The first thing that you're going to need is a template. Any kind of paper will do. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to sketch out a really simple one. It's not going to be exact because I'm just doing it to show you. And you're going to make kind of like um, a neckline. An oval kind of neckline. Now this is going to be for an adult. When you do your template, if it's for a child or an adult, remember that when you make your template, you have to make it smaller than what you really want it. Because once you cut this out, you are going to hem this over approximately one inch. There's going to be two folds and it's going to equal another inch all the way around. So make it smaller than you would like it to be. You have your template cut out. Find the center of the neckline, the top of the neckline. Find the center and mark it. This is going to help when you put it onto your material. Walmart cheap towels, medium sized towels. I bought brown and beige. I usually do those two colors and it has a nice pattern on the on the bottom. So the bottom you want way down there and this is the top of your towel. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure your towel in the center of that measure and that would be 13 and a quarter. So I'm going to just mark it with a pin. I'm going to take my template and I'm going to put the center of my template to the center of my towel where my pin is. And I'm just going to line it up, make sure it comes all the way to the top of that towel. And I'm going to anchor it in any which way, as long as it's not in the way of the scissors cutting around it. Just keep it within that pattern. Have your template all anchored, you can go ahead and just cut along the outside of it. And there you go. There's your template, there's the material underneath, and you can just put this aside. Keep the template because if you make a lot, you'll want to keep that one. Make sure that you place your towel with the good side facing the table, the back side facing you. So the next thing we're going to do is start making a fold. I should show you this. What you want to do is you don't want to make too big of a fold like this because you're going to fold it twice and your, your neckline is going to be huge, half an inch. The most important part is this part. When you go to make your first fold, try to make sure that your fold isn't like this on an angle. That makes it really difficult. It never comes out right. The first, the top fold is usually the most important. So try to keep it really, really straight. If you do that, when you fold along the rest of the seam, it will go very nicely into place for you. Go around your neckline, just like so. You can measure it as you go to make sure that it's even all the round, but I've done this so many times that it's just, um, it's like on autopilot at this point. I'm just going to anchor it all through and go around just the same as the side. There you go, nice and straight, both sides. We're at the iron board. This is the back side. You'll have all these pins in there, so flip it over to the right side. All you want to do is press it. Now that we have the crease in there, we're going to take all the pins out. When you have the pins out, as you can see, if you flip it like this, it's got a crease in it, so it's going to make this next step a lot easier. So the next thing that we're going to do is flip it over one more time. Use this outer edge as your guide and just flip it one more time and make sure that this piece here is nice and straight. You're going to notice some pleats around where it circles. Don't worry about that. Once you iron it, you take these uh, pins out. This is all going to smooth out, so don't worry about the pleating around here. Back at the iron, this is the underside of it with the pins in it. So I'm going to flip it to the right side and I'm going to make sure that I get a nice crease. 
start sewing. Because I ironed it, I can take the first pin out. It's going to just fold into place, stay there really nicely. Make sure that it's nice and straight up here. And towel is a lot thicker than other material, so it's a little bit harder to get started. I'm just going to get it started a little bit for it. And make sure that you back stitch all the way to the top and then go ahead and go down again. As I go, I'm going to take out my pins. When you come around the curve, make sure that you turn that towel a bit to help it along. When you come to the end, make sure that it's nice and square here. Go all the way really slow and then back stitch. Just a couple of stitches and carry on. Just like that. And that's it. Now you just cut these off. You can get these at the dollar store, Walmart, sewing places, anywhere actually sells them. They're a dollar for the 25 cents a piece. Uh, you can get them big, small, it really doesn't matter. They come in all sizes and they're very inexpensive. So this is how I put them on. Here's my towel. The right side is facing up. Underneath on the left side, I'm gonna flip it up. To see my underneath here. And I'm gonna get my button with the nipple facing up. And I'm just gonna position it, you know, close to the edges inside of the towel. So that knot is hidden. There we go. And I'm going to poke it through this little opening, there's four of them. And the next thing I do is I never take my stitch over here because then you're gonna have a lot of material way over here, your button's not gonna sit snug. So I try to go underneath, make a little hook in it, make sure you grab the material, and push it through. And I'm gonna do that, oh, I don't know, however many times you feel that it's gonna be snug. That's pretty secure now. So instead of going straight over to the other side, if you do that, you're going to have a piece of um, thread like this all the way around. And through wear and tear in the washer, that could break. So what I like to do is bring it out through the top, make a little hook underneath where it can't be seen, and bring it back out. And then underneath, grab a little hook, way underneath, you'll feel it, and go to the next opening. And then you're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. Go underneath, get a little piece of material, and push it through. And you're going to keep going with this one for as many times as you want that you think that this one is secure. And I'm going to continue that for the next two holes. End it is I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to go push it through and I'm going to push it up this opening this little opening here and that way it will be hidden. So I'm going to push this up through the opening and then I'm going to take my needle and get down there as far as I can to make a knot so the knot is hidden in there. I'm just going to make a little hook in here and bring it back up And then I'm going to do a little knot, a double knot. And I'm going to pull it down in there. Straight. And just do a little, a little knot. It doesn't, you don't need to, but I do. I make two, three of these. And then you cut it as low as you can go without hitting the knot. And then that way it will be hidden. And there you have it. That's your first little button. So there's our first button that we did on the underside of the neckline. This button, we're going to put the nipple side down. And it's going to be on the outside of the neckline. That way when you go to close it, it's going to overlap like so. Just make sure that it's somewhat the same on each side. One's going to be underneath, one's going to be on top. Both sides of the buttons are on. 
this is the underside this is the outside and you just snap it into place very secure easy to come out just like so. so this is what it looks like when it's done the reason why I have such a large neckline is because my dad really gets frustrated with things around his neck so I make it quite large are a major problem for one they usually only come down to the waistline about about here what they're made of is regular material and then a plastic backing when you have a plastic backing it tends to crack and rip after multiple times in the washing machine this I find works much better because it goes all the way down to the waist and over the knees so it's actually draped right over the knee something on this it's very absorbent but still thick enough that it's not going to go through unless of course you spill an entire cup of coffee you know loads of liquid it's it, it, it's, it's going to go through but more than not we've never had anything go through and it keeps papa really clean through the day and that's really important. Get the towels and my buttons. I can usually make four of these for under $17. That's really inexpensive and it's so worth doing. It goes really fast and they last a long time. If you want to make personalized bibs, you can. I always make them personalized to my dad um, and the funny little things that he says, you know, um, is pretty funny when he starts his stuff. So I'll make a second video and I will show you how to Put lettering on it if you like. Hopefully you'll see the difference of how good it can be with a longer bib. Till next time. Hey doll. I love you. Oh, thank you very much. I love you too.